This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we're talking about Le Corbeau from 1943, directed by mm-hmm. Henri Georges Clouseau. The tagline for the film, RJ. Mm-hmm. One of the most discussed films in the history of French cinema. Is it? This is the first I've heard of it. Rémy Germain is a doctor in a French town who becomes the focus of a vis- vicious smear campaign as letters accusing him of having an affair and performing unlawful abortions are mailed to village leaders. The mysterious writer who signs each letter as Le Corbeau, the Raven, soon targets the whole town, exposing everyone's dark secrets. This allegorical film, Mm -hmm. that's a claim, was highly controversial at the time of its release and was banned in France after the liberation. So, Which liberation? The liberation of France, RJ. Oh, okay. okay. You know, World War II? Never heard of it. Sounds you're, interesting. Are, are you familiar with the occupation? Uh, I know the occupation Wall Street movement that happened a while ago. What about the Bajoran occupation? The Bjorn? Is that a Star Trek well, Bajoran? Race? Yeah. Well, it, you'll, you'll see him one day. Oh, Kind of like Bjork, eh? Like Bjork. With little ridges on their nose. Sure. So either this movie's title is, uh, in English, The Crow or The Raven. Um, <laughs> no straight answer. No. It could go either way. I I mm-hmm. will. I mean, ravens are a little bit more, like, literary in my mm-hmm. mind. And, I mean, I don't know. I don't see Brandon Lee floating around. I mean, he's floating somewhere. He's floating somewhere in heaven. <laughs> R.I.P. Buddy, uh, he's dead. Um, anyways, so yeah, uh, this is a movie I'd never seen before, and had kind of been on my radar because of uh, Clouseau, the director directing uh, bangers like uh, The Wages of Fear. Mm-hmm. And I had heard about this movie, um, and when I went to go buy a copy, I found out it was out of print because uh, that's mm. how the Studio Canal rolls. Mm-hmm. But fortunately for us, at this point in time, uh, this movie is on the Criterion Channel, a v- viewable for all. Yeah, and I also found it. I don't know if this this is a first since the Criter- Criterion Channel's been around, but uh, I was surprised about that by the uh, Studio Canal bumper before this thing. You get the Criterion thing, and then the Studio Canal bumper comes up right on the channel, and I was just like, oh shit! Remember, so I wasn't expecting that. It showed up saying, "Hey, remember me." Remember me? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, what, do you want to talk about this controversy first? Talk about the movie. Uh, sure. Is it the abortion stuff? No, not even actually. It's the uh, oh no, it's the production stuff. So, oh. so this movie it's a French film uh, that was made okay. uh, during World War II, as it you know uh, France is occupied, and uh, it was produced by Continental Films, a German production company that was established near the beginning of the occupation. And uh, mm-hmm. because the film, this is reading off of Wikipedia, because the mm-hmm. film had been perceived by the underground and the communist press as vilifying the French people. Vilifying uh, the French people? Yeah. Uh, because of this, Clouseau was initially banned for life from directing in France, but after protests only until 1947. The film was suppressed until 1969, because it it vilified French people, I guess they just saw it. I mean, it's a a, a collaborative film, and there's a, there's some issues uh, as you might imagine. Uh, the mm-hmm. French people had with uh, corroboration uh, when it came with de- working with uh, Z Germans at mm-hmm. this point in time, and uh, the, the whole idea of informing and gathering information on your neighbors, and so this view like f- the French are. Uh, fairly chauvinistic and at this point in time uh there's a german movie being shown in theaters in france they just the french people probably didn't go but they definitely would have gone to support their french films so this was kind of like uh, contentious for that reason i guess Mm -hmm. yeah you did you dig i i I mean all right okay Uh, if you say so (laughs) So, uh, the, so uh, these were the things like I kind of read before starting to watch this movie. So I was like, kind of okay, let's see how this uh, plays out. And the movie mm-hmm. starts off with kind of like this fairly lighthearted tone. 
like the music's kind of like very upbeat and you're kind of mm-hmm. like, oh, what, what kind of uh, fun are we going to get into this movie, RJ? <laughs> mm-hmm. So we're the movie kind of uh, makes the audience do a little bit of its own thinking because it doesn't really explain characters' clear relations to one another. They basically just have characters go unnamed for like, you know, 15 minutes and they're going about talking to one another. And you're kind of like, who's this? Is this a doctor? Is this another doctor? Are are they banging? Are they in a relationship? Mm. Oh, they're not in a relationship, but maybe they're banging. And then there's these letters, th- these like really beautifully uh, cartoon dr- drawn, uh, illustrated, uh, mm-hmm. lettered letters that mm-hmm. that are telling me things about these people, and they're being addressed to these people very bluntly. They're not even asking for anything. Mm. There's, there's no ransom. Uh, it's just kind of like, hey, I know. I want you to know that I know. Mm-hmm. It's like, and by the way, did you know that this <laughs> dude is doing this shit? Mm-hmm. I wish someone told me. So a lot of the action takes place really between two locations. There mm-hmm. is the hospital. And then there is the... Uh, it's kind of like a schoolhouse, but maybe mm-hmm. like a slightly abandoned schoolhouse where it's like apartments. And yeah. uh, our lead doctor, uh, Remy Germain, he uh, has his office there, but he also has like another kind of area for, I guess, patients to sleep. Mm. I, th- I think is what's going on um, with the one woman with the uh, club foot, I, I guess. Who's got uh, the, yeah. Or I'm not club footed. She got it in a car accident. It's kind of like a school, right? Yeah. So there's a school because you can look. There's times where they're looking yeah. out the window and they can hear school children. But it's like it's on the grounds. Mm-hmm. Um, which yeah. Is, which I, is curious because uh, Led Balik also uh, all yeah. the action takes place at a school. Maybe it was just like easy to film there. Maybe. Um, but yeah. So it's like yeah. uh, there's a lot of references to this being like this small village the small town, but I never get that sense mm-hmm. that it's that small. I mean, they have a big old parade for uh, the, the suicide in this. Yeah. I mean, I've seen, I mean, it's not as small as like an animal crossing village right? or right. Island for that matter. So I was like, I got that sense too. I was like, I mean, it seems just like a normal town, maybe small compared to like a real big city, I guess. Big I guess city, big city living. Mm. Oh yeah. 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 So we have uh, our, our main our protagonist, Dr. Remy Germain, who even winds mm-hmm. up getting kind of a superhero origin story. Uh, he does. <laughs> and, and it's explained very explicitly. Very. Let me tell you. Expositorily. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's Denise, who is the, the woman that he, um, they, they, they call her, they call her a whore an awful lot in this movie. And in fact, uh, in the one special feature, Henry George Clouseau calls her, you know, she's a beautiful whore though. <laughs> like, Oh, can you explain what that means? I'm unfamiliar with the term. Which one? Beautiful. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just easy on the eyes, RJ. Oh, well, that sounds pleasant. Yeah. So, uh, she was a good girl is what you're saying. Well, you know, she's uh, she seems to have taken out. So, you know, her 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 superhero ness comes mm-hmm. from uh, that uh, people treated her like she was a cripple, and then she I learned how to walk, and now I can bang any man I want. It's kind of like your end game, almost. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we have Doctor uh, Michelle Vorzet, who is the uh-huh. local like. Psychoanalysis psychiatrist works in the mental ward or something like that. Uh, and he, he's kind of a a strange cat. He has an aloof mm-hmm. manner about him. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's married to uh, Laura Vorzet, who we you you get this tension between Remy Germain and Laura Vorzet. She, mm-hmm. She's the very like uh, meek proper blonde woman that's always kind of between the cracks of this uh, story, which as it plays out, there's, Mm -hmm. it literally is that there is a person who is writing letters to people, um, accusing people of things that they have have done that they've confirmed. And it's like, how do they know that? Obviously there's not that many people who know these things, uh, but there's also ones that are making outrageous claims 
uh, toward uh, one uh, Dr. Germain saying that he is an abortionist, that he is performing abortions. Illegally. Yes. So were they legal, do you think, at the time? I have no idea. Uh, I think Dude, it, we we can't look into it, so it don't matter. Yeah. yeah, so the movie opens up with Jermaine coming out of a house and his hands uh-huh. are just covered in blood and he goes to wash them and it's explained that uh, the woman that he, he was just tending to, uh, she gave birth, but he was unable mm-hmm. to save the child. But she lives and he, mm-hmm. he walks on his merry way. There's some like, even like a comment there about how uh, the problem with her that oh well her husband will have to try again to have mm-hmm. a baby with her and she's like well that's going to be difficult because he's not around and you're like hmm <laughs> yeah i mean i i haven't been in that situation myself but i feel like it would be challenging be, it'd be rough yeah a little bit no. a little bit uh we also have um i believe this is the right the, the name there's a lot of names here Let's mm-hmm. see here. Is that Marie Corbin? So we have, so Laura Vorzet, the wife of the doctor, she has a sister who mm-hmm. is a nurse, but is she also a nun? Because there's sort of like. Uh, it's implied. Yeah, there's like, because she works at like some sort of um, like hospital. And often nuns did run it. But and of course, there's this weird double play of like, oh, it's my sister. And mm-hmm. then there's also this implication that uh, her sister. I think it's Marie, um, had a uh, had eyes for uh, Dr. Vorzette, but Laura uh, got him. And mm-hmm. so she's bitter about this. And uh, so she's very, uh, and, and she does not seem to care much for uh, old Dr. Germain. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's been morphine disappearing, given being given out in these doses, dosages. And he's very curious about what's going on with there. And she seems very prying, that kind of stuff. Anyway, not a lot of people like her. She doesn't have a good mm-hmm. bedside manner, all that sort of thing. So, yeah. and then there's the the little girl, uh, Roland, who mm-hmm. there are some very unsavory things said about Roland in this film. Uh, uh, uh-huh. How she's 14 and a half and she's like a handful. So marry her off quick. And you're like, wait, what? Tomorrow? Like... What, what's... I mean, that's what I took of it. Yeah, it was kind of like you better get this chick out of here. And then like, there's a, but then there's wow. a, but then there's another one too, like some other creepy line about her. There, well, I mean, there's the implication that she's going to be next. Uh, that's one part, but there is there is another line too where they're like, "Oh yeah, check her out," and you're kind of like, "Hmm, weird." She, she has very uh, unfortunate hair. I mean, I thought it was kind of cool, but yeah. uh, you know. Hair is hair, right? Hair is hair. It grows mm-hmm. everywhere. Yeah. We get a, a Chekhov's uh, straight razor d- delivered from a a mother who... Check. You know... Chekhov? Chekhov, you know. Ensign Chekhov? Ensign Chekhov's uh, straight razor. Gets oh, left, yeah. Gets left with the man who's uh, recovering in the... Um, mm-hmm the the hospital with cancer (laughs) did it make you feel uneasy like the first thing he does when he opens the blade is he cuts his fingernails with it because that made me like super nervous as it should as it should it just seems like there would be it's one of those things like if you scrape your nails on like cement like it doesn't feel good i feel like that's what it would feel like or not i don't know yes so these letters, these poison pen letters, uh-huh. they're, they're being distributed willy nilly. They're appearing in people's mailboxes. Everybody's getting them. Um, people are getting mm-hmm. nervous because they don't know who to trust. Um, and soon enough, uh, it does lead, of course, to uh, the suicide of Francois, who didn't know he had cancer. Mm-hmm. And then when he finds out, he's like, well, I'm a goner. And he kills yeah. himself. And everyone's like, oh, my God, these letters, they're they are reckless. They're, they're causing people now to kill themselves. We have to find out who this person is. Um, there's a big uh, funeral 
for mm-hmm. this man. And one of these letters finds its way down into the pathway of the yeah. uh, procession. People are walking past it. It's really, mm-hmm. really well done. Um, people do, no, Everyone's afraid to pick it up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they just keep walking and walking and walking. And, um, and there's actually one thing, and this I didn't even think of until, because I found out uh, just this morning that there's actually an American remake of this film. So – Okay, so I actually tried to look into that, but I think because of the confusion between the crow and the raven, there was that like I saw that John Cusack thing, but I was like, that looks more like an Edgar Allan Poe thing, like than anything else, and that was the only thing I could find. Well, it, there's a the Otto Preminger film from 1951 called The Thirteenth Letter. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. Yeah. Um, uh huh. R- right off Wikipedia, I found that out. <laughs> Sure, sure. I mean, I thought I looked, but I guess not not good enough. Um, so in, in, in the film, uh, it's exactly the same movie, just without any of the that artisanal film craft we're all about. Ooh, yep. Mm-hmm. But so the thing that made me go, I'm like, oh, the 13th letter. And I'm like, isn't that M? And then, of course, mm-hmm. there's a thing where the uh, Francois, he's in bed 13, and he feels like that's bad luck, and he'd prefer to move, and he's told, that's mm. silly. And then uh, when he's being taken out of, I don't know if it's the, the hospital or the <clears throat> the um, the mortuary, there's a there's a bunch of big M's mm-hmm. around. And I'm like, what's up, what's up with that? I, I don't know. It was a curious little touch. Mm-hmm. Um, and speaking of curious little touches, I don't know if you noticed this one scene. I think it's a conversation that Jermaine's having with Denise because they're kind of okay. fig- like because they're, they're all trying to figure out their relationships with one another, their romantic mm-hmm. entanglements, and uh, what they're going to do, how they feel, how where, where they've gone, where they are, like whether or not Jermaine's going to leave town. Um, mm-hmm. But there's a bit where like Denise is leaving his office and she opens up the door and in the hallway there is an unmistakable like silhouette of like a person with like a fedora just standing Mm -hmm. there and i was like what the hell and there's like not like i don't i didn't notice any other bits like that in the movie but i was just kind of like huh is that just there purely to like amp up the uh the paranoia Mm. (laughs) or like the 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 tension i guess I, I remember that, but uh, I, I forgot about it because I remember watching. And I was like, "What's up?" And then it never comes back, and then it, lo- it left my mind. But right, yeah, that's that is a strange scene if you think about it. Well, yeah, because like for the most part, the movie is like fairly literal in its depiction of things. Um, mm-hmm. it, it it gets yeah. There's no real stylization, and then there's that, and you're like, "Whoa, what is that?" Mm-hmm. But then it's just gone, and you're like, "Oh, that's interesting." It doesn't ch- it doesn't harm the film or anything like that. But I was like, that's very peculiar. Yeah. In any case. So yeah, I mean the movie kind of like winds down into sort of like the, who is the right letter writer at one point. Uh, the, uh, Mer- the sister Marie is accused of being the, uh, the writer, the Raven mm-hmm. because she's so hateful. And so they like, they arrest her. And because like there's a, there's an angry mob. There's literally an angry mob that wants to tear her apart. They trash her apartment, um, but the, but she is like yeah taken away. And then while she's gone, things quiet down. There's no more letters until there is as it floats <laughs> down from the uh, the whatever higher parts of a church. And everyone's like, oh my god, it couldn't be her. So we gotta let her go. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And so, and then the movie kind of turns into like, oh, it's her. Wait, it's him. Double, triple psychos. That's right. Like a 2000s Michael Douglas movie. Michael Douglas or uh, you you remember um, some of them Johnny Dupp, Johnny Dupp films? Uh, John, Johnny Dupp? <laughs> yeah, he's a cousin of uh, Johnny Depp. Um, he was in what's in uh, Rupert Broccoli and uh, things of that nature. I see. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, they do uh, a few double psych outs, and then they release that lady after they completely trash her house and her life. <laughs> Good it's news. Like, Whoops. <laughs> See you later. See you later. Um. So yeah, all that said and done, that's kind of the gist of this movie. I went in with into this with like not really any expectations other than I liked Clouseau's other films, and yeah, I thought this was a very good movie rj wow yeah very good he very says very good yes yeah i know uh the uh 
stream of this, the Criterion Channel mm-hmm. uh, version of this looks amazing. It mm-hmm. looks so great, especially when you compare it to the uh, interview bit with like, from like the 1970s with a bunch of filmmaker, French filmmakers talking about uh, filmmaking during the occupation. And you see how cruddy this thing looked. Uh, yeah. At that point in time, you watch this, you're like, "Wow, this looks really great." Uh, mm-hmm. Which I'm I'm going to attribute to Criterion rather than Studio Canal, who's not known for their best uh, transfers. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, no. So like, I I thought like the storytelling in this was great. I found the I think the thing that I found uh, most pleasing was just how mm-hmm. absolutely cynical <laughs> this whole movie is. Like, yeah, every like there is like man. There's not really anyone to root for in this. Uh, mm-hmm. Jermaine is a cold man, mm-hmm. uh, even with his uh, his his origin story. Yep. Um, everyone's kind of they're all protecting their own stuff, and everyone's everyone's a bad everyone's bad everyone's like doing mm-hmm. the wrong thing. Everyone's uh, running around gossiping, rumoring all all the worst parts of uh, humanity uh, yeah. as far as that goes, and that's just how people are. Mm-hmm. that's that's plain folk but uh yeah I, I thought the mystery worked fairly well it wasn't super obvious who it was they because they kind of play honestly with it uh mm-hmm. like literally if the person who starts talking about this at the beginning they basically say well i mean i even even it could be me <laughs> and uh then it's like oh it plays out that way and you go ah yes that's the one that that is the person that it makes the most sense mm-hmm. um there's like, in fact, the the one scene between the the two doctors, between Vorza and Germain, with the the globe and the mm-hmm. uh, the swinging light, that was really well done. Yeah, where he admits that, uh, where Vorza admits that he is in fact a uh, morphine addict, and he's been the one that's siphoning it off. He's like, ah, it doesn't matter now. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, what, say it's okay if I tell you now. Yeah. Nobody gives a shit. Yeah, every, every, everything's out in the open. Why don't we just talk more openly about these things? Mm. I mean, that's the point of our podcast, isn't it? Yeah. To just be more open with each other. Free and easy. Free and easy, man. Carefree. Yeah, yeah I uh, agree with you on uh, those things that you said. Excellent. Uh, but yeah, no, I've, that's all I've got to say at the moment. RJ, yep. what did you Yo. think of Le Corbeau? Le like Corb? Le Corbeau? Uh, yeah. I would say Le Corbeau. Uh, I thought it was pretty good, too. Um so for a lot of the same reasons, uh, I also like how cynical it is uh, because the characters all are kind of shitty. I mean, the one you root for the most almost is the, uh, as they put it, the beautiful whore. Um, <laughs> I think because like she doesn't really like she never really does anything wrong other than she's like, I'm sick. <laughs> and they're like, you're not sick. Shut up. And then uh, you're like, oh, OK. Jermaine uh, is like, I think lovably miserable because he's always like, Meh. He's, like Meh. No. he's just like so stiff. Uh, he's, he's interesting to see for those things. Uh, some of the other characters too, like uh, the old, old professor man, the psychiatrist guy. He's like, I think when they introduce him, you're like, okay, he's so flamboyant. Did- he's either the bad guy or he has no connection <laughs> at all. He he kind of like has a striking resemblance to like a very decrepit Simon Pegg. I think that's the same. I think it's the right. That's the same doctor. Simon Pegg. Yeah, there's one one of the doctors. I can't remember if it's Doctor Bertrand or Doctor Delorme. Like two of the other doctors. Um, but yeah, like one one of them. Like I was like, what oh, is this Simon Pegg here? I was I was <laughs> is Simon Pegg from Star Trek and Shaun of the Dead. Is that who you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe. I don't. I I never thought of it. You could be right. Simon Pegg from Star Trek Three, you know. Uh, he could be. I don't know. I never. I never looked. Maybe. I don't know. Um, I find uh, one thing I thought was really funny was the the insane handwriting uh, like procedure that they go through. They're like, all right, we all know, we all agree, someone in here is is guilty, right? And they're like, yes. They're like, the only way we're gonna find it out is if everyone writes stuff out for 12 hours, maybe more. And everyone's like, what? They're like, no way. And then they're like, I don't want to do this. I'm innocent. And it's just like, well, if you're innocent, would you not help the law to find who is guilty? Oh, yeah. And, and then they all get guilted into it. And they're like, fam- doing... fam- Famous last words. And there's like, well, if you're innocent, 
you're going to help us and you're going to show that nothing to be afraid of. You just prove that you're innocent. And then they get subjected to this thing or they're just writing and writing. People are passing out. They're like, "Ah." and uh, I thought that scene was like particularly funny because I was just like, that's kind of goofy. I like the little commune of doctors that they're all like, it's this social club and they're, they have this doctor like hangout and they're like this other guy. What a piece of shit that guy is. And it's like, Oh, this guy is like, Oh, I had him the other day. That guy, not good guy. Uh, there's, there's talk of cuckolding, which I know you're a big uh, fan that, of. That's a, that's a staple of the criterion creeps podcast here. Yeah. I mean, in the, in the criterion collection, I mean, they just keep, it keeps popping up. Just keeps popping up those criterion cocks. I don't know what the deal is. Uh, so you get them, you get the townspeople, which I I've been noticing like a lot of townspeople movies where the where the people turn very very easily. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I don't think that's anything new or revolutionary. Like, I mean, this movie is pretty old, Jared. Uh, but I I, uh, I find it an interesting examination of groupthink and uh, how easily people are kind of swayed into a certain thing and it's just like influenced i should say it's like hey do this and they're like okay we will and it's like all right that's all it took he just had just needed a little push like the light bulb that he swings which is is a very good thing i also like the scene where he's kind of like not like monologuing like like villain monologuing in the like the bank or train station, whatever, or the bank, I think it is. He's like, it could be this guy. It could be this piece of shit right here. And the guy like hears him talking about it. And he's like, isn't that right, Bill? And, and the guy's like, who? He's like, are you talking about me? He's like, just a demonstration. Don't worry about a big, big guy. And then you're like, man, this guy's good at like laying it all out there for you. Uh, I got a lot of screenshots in this movie. Um, and then I think it's kind of like there's a, there's this weird, subtle cynicalness like there's the upfront stuff too but there's this other bit where it's like the girl who's pregnant near the end and she's like you know i um i threw myself down the stairs but uh it didn't really take so uh i guess yeah. there's a baby and you're like whoa because <laughs> she's just like yeah i tried to i tried to end it i threw myself down the mm-hmm. stairs but uh it didn't work so guess what bud you and me are gonna do it no and you're just like whoa uh, I liked the uh, cupping scene. I, mm-hmm. I got cupping once in oh, China. And, um, I was going to ask you what your thoughts on cupping were. Uh, I didn't know what it was when I got it. I was just a kid. kind of. I was like 18 or 16 or something. I, I was like cupping. I was like, sure, whatever. I'll give it a try. Uh, it like welted. And I was like, I had like a swollen back. I looked like a Ninja Turtle because uh, it was like in a shell and it was like really itchy. And I like the aftermath of it. I hated it. So just because it's like itchy and uncomfortable, I was like, I don't know what this was supposed to do. And it's like pulling out impurities or I don't know what. But uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, when, when I saw it, I was like, "Ooh, you don't see cupping very often. All those I like toxins. how the kid is doing it, too. You got to pull the toxins out, dude. Yeah. All that. All those vax. You got to pull them right out. Put it put put a cut potato on it. It'll suck stuff right out of you. Um, so that stuff's cool. I do like all the kids, like the schoolhouse things, because it becomes a point. Like what you said, they're doing the parade. No one's gonna pick up that flyer, and then some kids are like, well, "Fuck, we'll pick it up." <laughs> but like, we don't give a shit. Well, when we'll the guy when the guy's around. looking for his letter, and he's like, "Where did you see no? I didn't see any note." And then he leaves, and the kids like, "Yeah, I can't read." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to read, but I know that this is important. Um, so I like I like the characters like that that are included because you have those ones. You have the mother of the person who kills himself. Uh, and I think she has like some of the best like images of the movie are just like her and like her veil, like standing around in alleys and stuff. And you're like, ooh, what a spooky kid or a spooky lady. Uh, and I, I just realized we, we're totally glossing over one of the like – one of probably the most like I, I know we've said it a, few, a bit, but one of the most cynical things I think I've seen in the Criterion Collection is the inclusion of like a six-year-old girl trying to commit suicide. Oh uh, yeah, because it's like <laughs> Isn't she, she throws I herself don't in a pool. Get up! You come. You come. The scene starts with her already being pulled out, and uh, she's like, "Just put me back in," and you're just like, "It's like a little kid." And you're like, this kid wants to die, but not like in the like, oh, I'm so bored. I want to die. It's like this kid is literally actively 
trying to kill herself. And you're just like, whoa. You're like, that's some pretty dark shit. <laughs> I thought it was at least. Yeah. Uh, I, was, I, I was like, what is this? Uh, so that was interesting. And then, you know, Jermaine, the good guy comes. He's like, what do you want to die for? And, he's, and she's like, well, this happened. And he's like, shut up. Go be, a, go be a kid. It doesn't really play out quite like that. But he's like, who gives a shit what these people think? It's like, go be with your papa. Get out of here, kiddo. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this movie is uh, it's pretty dark in like some of the ways it kind of plays out. But the big highlight is the the hand drawings, uh, the letters and how nice those pretty block letters look. Yep. Those They're weird, pretty neat. There's like weird double letters and that those nice little mm-hmm. drawings of birds. Yep. Well, is be, it a crow be, or be, a, be raven? a crow or raven? I don't know. Maybe it's a magpie. Nope, definitely not. You don't know. They didn't try to like thieve or anything. They don't have any white. You're not sure they were stealing the innocence of the village. No, they're, no, they're just causing trouble. Oh, boys will been, be boys. You know, they were trying to, you know, get get what they wanted. What do you mean? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it's um. Good little flick, Jarrett. Uh, it's pretty dark, I think. Uh, there's, it's like I said, like, I don't know. I think a little kid trying to kill themselves and ladies throwing themselves downstairs to abort yeah. babies. Because the, uh, oh yeah, there's also like when the, the one woman is paid like 10,000 whatever francs to go yeah. like, hey, I need an abortion really bad. And he's like, no, I don't do that kind of thing. He's like, well, someone paid me to do it. He's like, well, who paid you? Hey, I don't tell. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll fleece you. And it's like, oh, wait a minute. I recognize you. You're that mm-hmm. brilliant surgeon, that b- brilliant brain surgeon. <laughs> Aren't you, are you the st- long lost Steve, brother? Steve, are you Stephen Strange? Are you Steve Gutenberg oh. from the Boys of Bra- Boys from Brazil? That would be a interesting crossover. Do you think Steve Gutenberg will, will ever make it into a Marvel movie? <sighs> no. That's too bad. It is too bad. It's too bad. But yeah, good show. Good show. Uh, I want to hear about who disagrees. I mean... Oh, and... actually, before that, though, I should also mention that I did watch uh, The 13th Letter. Directed oh, you by did? Aud- I did. Nice. I did How was that? Uh, bad. It's like... <laughs> it's it's just so unforgettable. Like, it's so forgettable. It is set in Quebec. Quebec? Qu- Quebec. Quebec Canada. City? Yeah, in a small town of hmm. Quebec. Uh, everyone talks completely American. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's weird. But yeah, this movie, I guess like coming right off of watching uh, how well made uh, like her boy is, you watch the 13th yeah. letter is so like, they, they take out the abortion stuff. That's just gone. And it, 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 all, oh. it, all it is is uh, the, the poison pen letters being written. Um, mm. And it's about like, like causing... Um, a ruckus with the, the affairs. There's yeah. no, there's no like the luridness is gone. The, like the, the driving people, uh, like, yeah, there is like the suicide still happens, but in the razor and also, Oh, the other thing too, with this movie with liquor bow and 13th letter, um, it kind of has the comeuppance of the, the man behind all this. Mm-hmm. And it's like the same beat, but like one is, beautifully shot and like enigmatic and the 13th letter they're like oh we'll do that but we're also going to make sure you know that uh the doctor and uh the right woman get together Mm -hmm. uh to what end though it's because they won't make they want people to feel good Hmm. i don't know if that's the point of uh lake or no, it you know is, what I mean. It is, and I not. know you're not talking about that. You're talking about the remake, but it's like, I think the point was to feel bad. Yes. Well, uncertainty at least. Yeah. The um. Yeah. W- w- what do you what do you think this movie's about? This liquor bowl. Uh, I don't did, know. Did, about did you do you, bad? do you do you get like the sense that it was like it makes the like why, uh, the communist party and why French people would have been like outraged that this movie existed. It, it paints the, the French in a bad mob kind of way. But I mean, I mean, now you watch it and it, I don't feel like those, uh, same, like that context to watch it doesn't come across. It feels like there's like yeah. a universal thing. This could happen to any community. It could happen to yours. The viewer. Uh, I was going to say, I'm not going to, I'm not going to play my hand too early, but 
a movie I just watched recently from Roger Corman, The Intruder, could be taken in the exact same vein, where it's like a village or townspeople that kind of turn against each other, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just like, I don't know if anyone was protesting The Intruder. Oh, yeah. Maybe they were. I don't know. Well, actually, people just didn't go to that movie. Well, there you go. It was a flop. But I mean, I think I think it's a nice little comparison because you could say it's like, yeah, crowds of uh, these village people who are just like, it's like, we're going to do what we think uh, is right here. And, and Bud. The, yeah, the whispering, communicating, that kind of thing. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's mm. part of it. Well, who who hates this movie? Yeah, 13th Letter, know. though, stinks. Uh, yeah. Don't watch it. Uh, who hates First, uh, we've got uh, Axa, who doesn't, who's appeared before, and I believe mm -hmm. is a listener of our show. Oh my goodness! So hi, Axa. Hey, yeah. what's uh, have I mentioned? Well, we got naked uh, with uh, you know that guy who was uh, in the Harry Potter movies, Criterion movie, uh, Aguirre, Wrath of God, Holy Mountain, Memories of a Murderer. Seems pretty popular right now. That movie. We got some other good stuff in five stars. We got Come and See, some Evangelion in here, Porco Rosso. I know that's a big film that you're into. And, and Axel wrote Red Letters, not good. Red Letters. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I forgot you didn't even read the thing. No, you just launched right into it. I do. I do that sometimes. Um, Mike Math three. Yeah. Writes with one and a half stars. Didn't like it. I mean, I think that's. It's fair. They have exactly zero followers. Uh, or they're following zero. Sorry. They have six followers. Excuse me, you guys. Five-star films include Blue Ruin, Goodfellas, The Eager Sanction, and Hot Tub Time Machine. Half-star films include Winter Light, Slime City, Under the Skin, Ghoulies, Natural Born Killers, Cop Out, Return of the Living Dead 2, and Mean Streets by Mr. Martin Scorsese. It's kind of a medley of uh, half-star films in there, Jared, if I've ever seen. Huh. Uh, next up is Frost-like with two mm. stars. Let me tell you, I could not care less. I actually kind of appreciate the bluntness of uh, some the, of these reviews. The, the, they're all blunt. It's just, I don't like it. It's like, okay... <laughs> Sure. And I mean, there's not much to pick out of their, uh, their, their, the movies they do like. If I'm, I, I, I can't, I can't find anything in here, man. This guy's only five star film is The Incredibles. <laughs> wow. Uh, so, and finally, Callum, who I do believe has been on this before, ooh. two stars, painfully dull. Mm. Well, let's let's look at this. I mean, one of their favorite films allegedly is The Night of the Hunter. So you know what I mean, Jarrett. Before trilogy, vanishing. Oh, Midsummer. They gave five stars. Talk about painfully dull. Get out of here. Get out of here, Jarrett. You nerd. Um, any other thoughts? Nah. nah. I, think, I, I mean, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. <laughs> mm -hmm. After the break, I tell RJ he's got the big C. He tops himself. And then, I don't know, the angry mob chases me down and throws me into jail. <laughs> but, I, but I did do it. So, wait. That doesn't work. Oh. You're the bad, you're the bad guy. I'm, I'm the hero of my story. Aren't they all? I'm pretty sure Timothy uh, McVeigh was the hero of his story too. Timothy McVeigh, or what was that guy's name? McVeigh. Yeah, Timothy McVeigh. I was close. You're close. Yeah, I was close. Good. That's that's how I want to send this episode off with a little <laughs> reference to the Oklahoma City bombing. Well, I mean, what else are you going to talk about? Right? People are running out of things to talk about. Dude. 